Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bark, Bark Your, Your Biz. In this program, it's when you're going to see entrepreneurs give their elevator pitch for our panel of experts. So I'd like to introduce the panel first. To my left, the handsome young man over there is Phil Chang. He's the owner of Retail Phil and a um, vastly experienced consumer products goods expert at CPG Wizard and retail expert and all around nice guy. Next to him, the lovely Taz Latifi, our dear friend from Petropolis in New York City. She's a, a cutting edge retailer and nutritional advisor. Her store is not just a place to shop, it's a place to learn. And to my immediate left, to my dear friend BC Henshin, uh, the owner of Platinum Paul's in, Where in Indiana? Carmel, Indiana. I'm sorry, in Carmel, Indiana. I should know that by now. And BC writes for Pet Product News, does a wonderful column. He's one of my favorite writers in the industry and um, uh, a thought leader and, and a retailer with a great amount of experience. And to my right is my lovely wife and co-host, Amanda Benny. And I'm Anthony Benny, and um, we're ready to get this thing rocking and rolling. So our first contestant is Kaori Watanabe, and she is one of the owners of Hachitama Inc., and their product is Toletta. So we're going to um, make sure that Kaori is all ready to go before we start the timer. By the way, the way this thing works is our entrepreneurs get a three-minute pitch. We will not interrupt. They can use any and all of that three minutes. You can use 30 seconds or three minutes, but three minutes is the limit. And then our panel will ask a couple of questions, and we will do our best to, uh, to score and and we will choose a winner who will actually get a $500 gift certificate towards this show next year. So that'd be a substantial reduction in your booth cost. And all of our entrepreneurs will be uh, receiving a $100 uh, voucher for the runner pups, we call them. So are you ready, Kaori? Yeah. Okay. Step by, let's make sure your mic's working well. Can you hear me? Okay. Hey, give a little bit, little bit more on the uh, presenter mic, please. Check again. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's better. Okay. Yeah. When you're ready, say go. So, oops. Where are we getting that? We good, Jeff? And our director, Jeff Gordon, behind the scenes. Go. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Kaori from Hachitama, Japan. As you can see, I am a crazy cat lover. This is a cat, by the way. <laughs> and I've been lived my whole life with cats, like always. And they make me happy, like anytime and whatever my, what my status is. But the life with cats is not always easy. It is because of their incurable disease, which th almost 30% of cats are suffer from. And it is also the top cause of cat's death. Does anyone know what it is? No? It's CKD, a chronic kidney disease. And I also have an experience of losing my precious cat to CKD, and he was my best friend. So to fight against CKD, we came up with a solution. It's our product, Toletta. It's a smart IoT cat healthcare litter box. As you can see, this is litter box. It's too high, though. And as its initial symptoms of CKD, urine volume of cat will increase and bo body weight would be lost. And these changes cannot be found easily by the cat owners or even by the vets, as it is necessary to monitor their urinate status all the time by their litter box. It's really hard. So to find those CKD signs much earlier, we developed this toilet. Toletta measures cat's body weight and urine volume automatically so that owners can check them 24-7. And Toletta also has an image recognition camera on it to recognize multiple cats living in the same household. We don't use colors because we want to be as much cat friendly as possible. And also, Toletta has a multi-layered stru structure. It enables us to collect feces and urines in the different layers 
And this structure also helps the cat owners to keep this litter box clean. We think this is, this is an innovation in cat litter box and also the cat healthcare. So, um, we have released this toiletta in Japan on August 8th, and we have been receiving over 1,000 orders right now. The most cat friendly litter box from Japan. And you know, Japan is an innovative, innovative country of toilet, like Toto. And this litter box is coming to the United States very soon. We are now preparing for that. Can you wait for us? <laughs> and that's all. Thank you very much. Excellent job, Carrie. Thank you so much. Very nice. Can I ask a question? <laughs> um, are you selling the, the whole kitten caboodle with the litter? Is that what the subscription service is? Um, no, I mean, like, um, we just sell the litter box itself and litters and the pot. This urine pot should be, um, you know, Get selected the by the old owners. Okay, so we can use any litter. Any litter um, is usable, or do you have a recommendation on litter? We have a recommendation. It's from Purina and their okay. product breed. Yesterday's news? Yeah, yeah. That's what you prefer? Yeah. So if a, if a consumer doesn't like that litter, because and also if a cat doesn't like the litter, mm -hmm. maybe we should option? come up with other options, or like we can bring them from Japan, yeah, to you know recommend some other options. But in the United States, we found Purina is the best for this litter box. Yeah. yeah. The well, yesterday's no. news. Is that a news? It is the yesterday's oh, the, news the, the, the style specific. litter from Purina because they make several different. Yes, yes. Okay. Like they use the same structure for the litter box. They use the old. Right. So the but the litter itself, it's the recycled like um, newspaper, isn't that? Yeah. One? Oh, yes. your, your newspaper. That's yeah. what I'm, is um, it that one? No, it's from the uh, mineral. So it's the a clay. It's, it's a, a clay, clay litter. litter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 So it'll work with any clay litter. Um. Uh, with the um, litter that doesn't absorb the urine. Clumping. Clumping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a no, you have non to use a non-clumping litter? No. Okay. So are you working with Purina? Or is there a, a joint mm. venture at the moment? We are trying to <laughs> right now. <laughs> say your name multiple times, I... Yeah. There's always curiosity. Sorry. No, that's no okay. problem. Okay. Um, go ahead. I have a lot of cat questions. <laughs> What's the um, price point? Um, we are now considering about price model, but in Japan we um, adopted the subscription model. So we don't ask for the, um, any initial cost, but we ask the customers to pay $5 per month. And uh, the minimum contract would be two years. So it's like a cell phone. We ask the customers to use the service with $5 per month. And as long as they use the service, they need to pay $5. And you, and you have a thousand current subscribers? Current, yeah, one thousand. Yeah, in Japan. Premium. In Japan, yeah. Um, that subscription gives them the, the whole package, gives them the litter, litter pan. Oh, this um, whole li litter box, yeah. So and also the uh, mobile application to check for the owners to check the uh, status of cats. So, um, okay. Phil and BC, jump in. Um, grab the mic, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the question for me, so on the subscription box mm -hmm. and the data, um, will, how will that model work? Will you ship them direct to a consumer then or? Yeah, we are, um, right now we are considering about that. So maybe um, we adopted that model in Japan because we have a manufacturer in Japan, but uh, currently we don't have any you know, relation in the United States. So we need to find some relations to um, enable our manufacture at scale. So if we cannot make it, maybe we should add some, you know, um, shipping cost from Japan and stuff like that. So it's not decided yet, but we are considering that we need, need to, or like we want to um, have a same model with Japan. The, the cost free, no upfront yeah, cost yeah. model. Because we want uh, as many cats as possible to use our product to collect data. So it's connected to the internet? Yes, we ask the customers to prepare Wi-Fi. So it is Wi-Fi, you don't have to plug it in? Oh, we need to uh, have an um, AC adapter There's as well. There's power yeah, that power goes adapter. to it? Yes. And then 
what is the normal cleaning and maintenance? Is there any concern with the mm. sensors and equipment? No, uh, for the sensors, uh, there would be no like urines to touch. So the owners can just wash this whole thing, like on the outside. So we think it's quite easy. Can, can you just touch on multiple cat households? How do you know who's having the problem? It has face recognition. Yeah. Right. It has face recognition? Okay, I didn't hear that. Sorry. Okay, so we can actually see who's peeing and pooping. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll what, take that part for the litter oh, box. Is that what, okay? what if an imposter cat comes in, like one that's not <laughs> part of your regular, oh. cat, like a cat that doesn't belong in the house comes in, what does the... the oh, that's um, maybe very irregular. It, it registers as maybe, unknown cat Yeah, maybe um, in that case, uh, this camera would say, like, this is not the, you know, registered cat, right. so that uh, owners can choose like which cat it is, and okay. if it's not the, you know, their cat, maybe she can, or she or he can, you know, reject that data. Okay. And the dog is helpful in that situation too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they don't, you know, like, I mean, I mean like, um, they only, you know, use the registered data, so. Right. Well, you I did. A, I'm sorry, sorry. Go, Amanda, um, please. So, as a matter of fact, a dog could not get into that to eat anything out of it. Which is what our dogs do. <laughs> oh, That's really? Pretty gross. Um, I know, but oh my God, yeah, sharing all that dirty laundry. Uh, um, when the you know, I mean, that's kind of gone. <laughs> different things comes into the um, litter box. Maybe owners can check on the uh, application so that um, maybe she can see that dog is in it. That the dog. So maybe. There now so there you're doing make, deposits, okay. but not withdrawals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did an excellent job, thank and, you very and much. your English thank is, you. is fantastic. Oh, you really you did much. a very nice job. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Give you a nice cheer here. Okay, we're going to get ready for our next guest in a second. Jeff, would you check that, please? No, not, not hearing back from Jeff. Yeah, I am. We're trying to. Do you want me to go around the corner? Yeah, just uh, see what's going on. Now we're going to get ready for our next Parker. And that would be Dr. Mel Bloom, the CEO and founder of Viacem and Telemore for Pets. Now, we're, um, yeah, please give it, uh, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do this again. Let's get some applause, some serious applause here. <laughs> Now, uh, Dr. Dr. Mel, um, before we start the pitch, we've decided as a panel that we want to give you a minute to explain Telomore Science because it's such a, Telomere Science, Telomore is your company, because it's such a new area of longevity enhancement and, and you know, uh, lifespan and there's so, it's in, such an interesting new topic that I thought it wouldn't be fair for you to do your pitch without at least giving us a quick primer on telomere science as one of the pioneers in the field. Okay. And uh, how many people out there know what a telomere is? Okay, got it. Okay. Actually, the science of telomeres begins somewhere in the 1990s by three scientists who discovered what it was how it functions, and they're still learning about it. And medical schools and veterinary schools are first beginning to teach it. So you'd be surprised how many physicians and veterinarians don't even know what a telomere is. Uh, basically, what a telomere is, is the end cap of your DNA. And there are 92 of them. <laughs> now, what does it do? It stops DNA the helix from unraveling, similar to the way your uh, shoelace, the cap on your shoelace stops the shoelace from unraveling. And as we grow older, it keeps shrinking. The average human, the cells divide 60 times in a lifetime of a 75 year old. And every time the telomere gets smaller and smaller until the point where the cell either 
expires from apoptosis, cell death, or senescence, just old age doesn't function anymore. Now, what the scientists discovered was an enzyme called telomerase. And if this enzyme is activated, the telomere doesn't shrink as fast every time the cell divides. Basically, it can extend the lifetime of a person from 5% to maybe 10%, with certain animals anywhere from 5% to 50%, depending on the lifetime of that particular animal. Uh, okay. A, a dog, I think of a dog that you may be familiar with, um, that might only live 10 years, is a Great Dane. You could extend the lifetime of a Great Dane almost 50% if you can increase the enzyme telomerase and stop the shrinkage of the telomere. Uh, okay, I think that's a great intro. We're going to actually do your, your pitch now. Uh, does, um, I think it's so important that we got at least a good primer in, in the science. And again, we're really honored to have you here as one of the pioneers in this field. So we are going to start now. Okay. Uh, we started looking into this, how to manufacture the active ingredient. There's only two ingredients so far that seem to activate the enzyme telomerase. One is patented by a company called Geron, and uh, they use it mostly for human supplementation. Uh, it's sold by a group of physicians who specialize in the area of anti-aging. And they get some pretty hefty prices for it, as much as fifty to hundred thousand dollars for the active ingredient, and six to seven hundred dollars a month to take the supplement. Wow. We found a, a, a cheaper way of doing it, um, and extracting it so it doesn't violate the patent, and it makes the pricing a lot more affordable. We started selling it in the human area first. And believe it or not, we sell more to China than any other place. Uh, they don't seem to trust anything that comes out of their own country. <laughs> so at least they buy with a certificate of analysis. And uh, they've been using it, we've been marketing it to the human area for about three years, I would say. We decided to um, do some experimentations in an affiliate company in India with dogs and cats. And we found that, again, it increased the lifetime depending upon the species of the dog or cat from 5% to as much as 50%. We've also been doing testing of horses, in fact, with a lot of mammals. Those experiments are still going on. They ran for about five years before we decided to try to enter that particular market and sell it to the uh, pet industry. And of course, the prices are one twentieth of what Geron sells their human product for. They haven't gone into the uh, pet area at all. I think we're the only ones in there. Okay. That's a, a, a brief synopsis. I could talk about this for hours, though. Oh, I mean, I'm it's, trying to condense it into three well, minutes. You, more questions. Yeah, it gives us plenty of time to ask questions. You want to make sure you had as much time as, as you wanted. So when, when you said that um, the ingredients, one is coming from Giron, the patented part of the ingredient list? Of what you well, it's called astragalus in the plant, That's the astragalus plant. Okay. So there it's coming are from six astragalus. factors in the astragalus plant. Only the number four, which is about one-tenth of a percent, is the only active ingredient. And that has to be extracted and repurified. It's quite expensive to harvest the plant um, and repurify it. So that's what you're using? That's what we are using, yes. Okay. And You can't patent a natural substance. Heard that about CBD. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about that earlier. <laughs> and dandelions. Uh, and dandelions, yeah. Okay. You wanted to ask a question? So, Mel, so your, your compound is yeah. patented or is not because no, it's, it's a natural No, it's proprietary, the, it's a proprietary the extraction plant. methodology is similar to the way rare earth chemicals are separated mm -hmm. through an ion exchange methodology. 
and you, we can get it up to about 20 to 30 percent pure without it, the price increasing to some drastic level of paying those 50 to 100 thousand dollars a kilo. So for um, a 75 pound Labrador uh, for the current pet product uh, that you're marketing, what would the chart, what would the cost per month be? Um, 17 and a half dollars of the retail price a month, 35 dollars. And what form is it in? Is it a capsule form right now? So for to get the animal to take capsule, they have these injectors where you shoot it into them. Most people don't want to use that. Right. So they will coat the capsule with cream cheese or peanut butter, or they'll just open the capsule up, put it in the. That's what I was going to ask if it, it had a taste to it or. No. I mean, you could probably put super gravy on it. It doesn't and have a taste to it. it so. The ingredients are all natural. They're pretty neutral ingredients. Right. So and it's one? No, there's, you need a lubricant to put it into the capsule and usual diluents that are used, you know like stearates. Right. I mean dosage. like um, The dosage is five milligrams okay. for, all right. I didn't get that. for a small pet. Okay. For a horse, it's 50 milligrams or more. Okay. What will the pet owner expect to see? if they've been using this product for a length of time? Good question. Nothing really. But there is a way of seeing whether it's working or not. So if you want to go and spend the time and the money, your vet would take a sample before you start, blood sample, and he would send it to a laboratory for analysis. Now they have a standard to work from. One year later, take another blood sample and see if the telomere has shrunk any or if it's stabilized, or if it's actually grown, then you know the product is working. So let, let's say I, I do a CBC for my dog and his um, liver enzymes, a couple of his liver enzymes are elevated. Are you telling me that this supplement is, a, a year from now, is going to have an impact on his liver enzymes? What do we, what, what no. is that, see, what is that the, the panel that you're asking us impact. to test? And everything derives from the telomere, from your DNA. So if the animal is getting a decent diet, is being exercised fairly regularly, and is in fairly decent health, you should increase that animal's lifetime, depending upon the species of the dog or cat, or anywhere from 5 to 50 percent. A Great Dane, you can increase the life from 10 years to 15 years. With a skipper eek, yeah, but probably I'm, less, because they normally live 20 years. I'm just trying to understand if the baseline is, if, if I do the blood panel and there's something wrong. No, you shouldn't be doing a blood panel. You should only be Which, checking. What are we checking for? Strictly What's the, blood? the telomere length. The size so it's of a the specific telomere. blood test. Exactly. Okay. okay. And that's not normally on the leuco site, because that's the easiest yep. blood cell to check. Can it be heated? So uh, I'm asking because is it something that could be added into products? It can be heated up to a point. You don't want to heat it too high because then the active ingredient is going to start to decompose. The enzyme will be de denatured and just the, break the, down the into chemical, protein. No, right? The enzyme is in the body of you and the animal. Okay, that enzyme is telomerase enzyme. The more you can increase that enzyme, because it decreases as you get older. Right. And that's why the telomere is shrinking. Right. So you want to stop that telomere shrinkage. Sorry, I have... I have that's a, the science behind the whole thing. No, if that's you great. want to read it, I can and, uh, leave you no, a no, that's, that's simple fine. I think, paper on it. I think everybody outsciences me at this table for sure. I, I think my question is more um, from someone who's not a science background. Um, is there a significant marketing budget behind this, like to make this thing go? Because uh, to me, so the science stuff is all, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening and I'm digesting and somewhere on my six hour drive home, I'll, I'll probably figure it all out. <laughs> but um, for the average pet consumer, I, I think the problem is, is I, I'm gonna buy this product, I, I'm gonna buy it for 35 bucks, 36 bucks, and probably buy it a couple of months at a time. Um, but there's no, there's no, clear test that I can do to figure out where I started and where I ended and I've, I've got to invest for a, a year 15, 
but but I'm, but I'm I the payout is 15 years from now when my Great Dane lives another five years, right? Yeah. So to me, that's that's a purely a marketing play. It's there's nothing around this that isn't miraculous. I think my question is how much significant marketing is because it's all about how much you get me to buy into it, right? Like you guys are all talking about the size. All I'm hearing is if I do this and I do this right and I do it for 15 years, well, if I do it for 10, I should see another five out of my Great Dane. But that's 10 years of, of pure faith that this works. You don't know. You can ch actually check the efficacy if you have a veterinarian who's willing to take a sample, yeah. send it to a laboratory. There's a very good lab, one in Spain and one in Israel who will do that. But, but that requires marketing, too, because I don't know what I'm asking for. I'm going to show up and go, listen, like, I'm giving this thing to my dog. Uh, <laughs> could you do the blood thingy that um, you, you can do it on yourself, thingy? actually, if you want. I, I get it. Who's more important, you or the dog? Right, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Is, is of the course, faith, you're good right? <laughs> It's the faith that's involved in this requires a lot of marketing. So I think what yes. I'm, I'm looking at is, I think, I'm, I'm not the retailer, but I'm, I'm looking for all the marketing that says, I'm absolutely going to go because these guys are going to put it on their shelf. But unless you get that consumer to buy into that faith, they're not going to buy it. You're probably right. right. You've got to somehow convince the veterinarians. They're much easier to, because of the science behind it. Right. Um, some people you'll never be able to convince. Some people consider their dogs more and cats more important than themselves. Yeah. So they'll give, feed it to their dog or cat, but they won't take it themselves because there's a question in their mind. Is it really working? And it's so much easier to test on humans. The problem that I see from the retailer, you can't put anything on my shelf that says anti-aging, at least in the state of Indiana. They would pull that off. The feds will pull it off. You can say longevity for pets. You can say anti-aging for humans. Don't look for logic from our bureaucrats in Washington. <laughs> that doesn't exist. So the the... Veterinary department says you can't use the term anti-aging, so we use the term longevity. Longevity. But you can say anti-aging. If you look at the human version. How, how many part. animals have you had on this, the number of years? What, what's the data? The testing started in around 2002, if I recall, 2003. It's still ongoing in India. They in can India. do the testing work a lot less there than we can here. And can you share any of the information from the testing with the animals and their survival rate? And what, what, and the fellow, what can you the share? fellow who was in charge, unfortunately, recently passed away from pancreatic cancer. He, we're was he trying to, any telomeres? Uh, well, he has all, we're trying to find the, all of the data for the people who were running the tests there. We relied on the input from him. We never saw the actual technical data. We're trying to retrieve that right now. And, and how long has, have you had the active uh, market for the pet product? Has it just started very recently. We've been doing the human for about three years, marketed mostly by um, the internet. And I one or two were naturopathic physicians who were into it. And so currently, um, most of your sales are either for the human products through naturopathic also, physicians and human. other uh, professionals and for the pets is online, direct to consumers? Yeah, that's why we just thought of this telemore pet. Great. Anybody else have any, any further questions? Well, I want to thank you so much for... Thank you. For you want to see some samples of the bottles? We have them here, too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. sure. Absolutely. We'll take a look at that. We can do that. Thank you very much, Dr. Bloom. Thank you for coming down here to, to visit with us. We really appreciate it. Okay. Um, next up, uh, we have Ann Carlson, the founder and CEO of Jiminy's, and uh, she's going to talk to you about a new alternative protein for uh, dogs and cats, probably other carnivores as well, but a ferret probably wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, and... Um, Anne's uh, background is very extensive in the consumer products industry and some of it in, right here in our core pet industry with some of the largest companies that you would be very familiar with. Um, and this new project is, uh, is, is her, her brainchild and we're really excited to have you here to present. So thank you for coming, Anne. And if you're ready, I will get us started. You bet. 
Hold on one second. Okay. One second. Just give me a good park here. All right. Go. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Carlson, the founder and CEO of Jiminy's, and we make sustainable dog treats and soon food. And what makes it sustainable is we use cricket protein. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the product in just a sec, but let me give you a little background on why I decided to do this. A couple years back, uh, the UN did a study, and it said that the world population is going to exceed 10 billion by the year 2050. And food, to, to feed that population, food production needs to increase by 70%. Now, add in the food needs of our, our pets. In the US, we have over 89 million dogs that consume over 32 billion pounds of protein each year. And actually, and they also consume 19 billion pounds of cereal, but, but the protein is where the real issue is. It's just not sustainable. So at Jiminy's, what we do is we replace traditional animal protein, uh, cow, chicken, with crickets. So it is, crickets are really amazing. It's delicious, nutritious, sustainable, humane, hypoallergenic. Let me start with sustainable. It uses exponentially less feed, less water, less greenhouse gas emissions. If I compare this one bag of treats to the same size bag of beef treats, I save 250 gallons of water with this one bag, just to give it perspective. From a nutrition perspective, uh, they're fantastic as well. It's a small animal, so it is a complete protein with all of the essential amino acids, but it goes beyond that. It also has fiber. It has taurine that we talked about this morning. It has iron and vitamin B12. The list actually goes on and on. We like to call it a superfood, and it is delicious. It actually, um, I, I tried them myself, and they taste like sesame seeds or, or uh, sunflower seeds. It's nutty and earthy. And we can combine it with uh, very intentional ingredients to create this wonderful product that is delicious, and the dogs absolutely love it. So I'm also going to talk just a little bit about the traction that we've gotten. So we've been out for about a year now, and we launched with our biscuits, and just this summer, we launched our soft and chewy uh, dog treat, which is amazing as well. And um, in that time, we're in now over 300 stores across the US. Uh, from a consumer perspective, we've got a great following, over 30,000 followers on social media. And uh, we just had an article come out from BuzzFeed and they called us a life-changing product because we're helping to combat climate change. We were the only pet product included in their list of seven life-changing products. So as a pet parent, you can love this product, your dog loves it, and it's good for the earth. <laughs> there we go. There There's a nice. three. Nice. You were perfect on that timing. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Ann, for bringing, bringing the crickets, bringing the crickets to Bark Your Biz. Um, panel, let's, let's go for it, guys. Palatability. Talk it, about palatability. It's really good. So the biscuits, with, with everything that we've done, uh, we've done several stages of palatability testing. We all, I always start out with my own dogs. Uh, and, and of course, I taste them myself, which I eat these in almost every meeting that I'm in because they're human grade. Uh, these scored in the high 90s. The new training treat, um, it actually scored 100 in the acceptability test, which is amazing. So it got, uh, the, there were a couple little dogs that don't like biscuits that were holdouts. We got them with the, the training treat, soft and chewy. How many dogs do you use in your, in your tests? Oh, in the palatability yeah. test, it's 120. 120. Yeah. What's what the, do, oh, I'm sorry, go for it. What do crickets eat? It's, it's actually a lot like chicken. So they're raised in barns and they have a, a feed mixture that they're fed. And all of our barns are, are very consistent. They have to be because we've got to have a consistent uh, GA on the product. And uh, they, they also add in uh, some vitamins and minerals that are essential for crickets as well. So are they, is their feed non-GMO as ethical as what your end product is? Yeah, it is, definitely. 
Are those different flavors? Yes. Um, so we have three flavors of biscuits, and we have the one training treat. And all of them come in two sizes, and we did that very intentionally. Um, the, this is the, the big bag, which is the six ounce. But we also do a trial size bag because we know that there's a lot of people out there who are like on the fence, so like, oh, God, will my dog like this? So what we did is we created this trial size, thinking about the path to purchase and allowing the consumer to be able to pick it up. It sits on the counter. Um, think of it as dog candy. And they can, they can buy it just as an add-on little purchase. Um, we, we suggest uh, $1.98, so anything under $2 is basically like it's free and easy to add on to the bag. And this is what this is what it looks like, and it actually has a little cheat sheet on the back of it for the guys who are working in the store so that they can remember what they should be talking about. Yeah, I just got the samples. Are the uh, crickets uh, raised domestically on, in facilities here in the United States? Um, actually, all are North American that we're using. Uh, so there's a lot that are coming from Canada, but we're starting to transition into the U.S. as well. Uh, we've got some California farms, and we're working with some others, um, sort of taking them along the process. A lot of the farms are still small, so the biggest professional uh, farm is in Canada, and we work with them uh, quite a bit. Thank you. BC? Did, did we talk price? Um, where do you, is this package and manufactured for you? You mentioned your farms. Uh -huh. So are you sourcing the crickets from one place and then somebody else is co-packing for you? Yes, we're using all co-packers at this point. And then when I read a label like that, I get nervous on things like natural smoke flavor because mm -hmm. certainly there can be a lot hidden in that ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, have you looked at ways to try and make a simpler, cleaner label? Well, it, it, that is the training treat. The uh -huh. tr that's the only one that has that in it. Um, they're, they're, if you look at the original biscuits, 85% of what's in the bag is on the front of the package. So on this one, crickets, lentils, sweet potato, flaxseed, peanut butter, apple. So that's 85% of what's in the bag. We try to keep it really clean and simple. The training treat's special because it is a functional design, and we worked with Dr. Ian Dunbar uh, on the design of that. He, um, I think all of you guys know who he is. Um, but, you know, we were really concerned about the, the feel of the treat, the ability to break it into pieces, because it was designed as a training treat. So, so the palatability had to be out of this world as well. Um, and then these are more your sort of your limited ingredient uh, product. Uh, my, my not concerns, but questions as, as a nutritionist and a formulator of, of edible products for dogs myself is the long term. I mean, the amino acids are there. The structure seems to be sound for uh, complete nutrition for a dog. But we don't have a lot of long term, you know, um, studies in terms of the how the product works over time. And uh, so I'm just just kind of wondering uh, in terms of conditioning for the animals, muscle tone, mm -hmm. uh, coat and skin condition, what have, what have you seen and what, you know, what should we, you know, uh, how can we be reassured that this is actually a good way to feed a dog, I guess is the blunt way to put it. Sure, sure. Well, the studies actually go back quite a ways. I mean, I mean people, have been, people and animals have been eating insects uh, as a food source for thousands of years. Um, and the studies that we've pulled together, they actually date back to the 80s. So they've been doing studies on this for years and years and years. And uh, one of our other advisors is Dr. Mark Fink, who has two PhDs. One is in animal nutrition and the other one is in entomology. So he's been a great resource for us. But what we're doing to supplement the work that has already been done before, we've also done our own. Uh, we just actually finished a dog study. We had um, 32 dogs on four different diets uh, for, for um, over a month. And um, that is all about sort of digestibility and utility. So we've, we're actually really excited about the results and we're planning on publishing it uh, for the Pet Food Forum. Well, that's, that's a great step. It's yeah. gonna, that's going to help a lot, I'm sure. Amanda, did you have some? I was just, um, did we mention pricing? 
what type of pricing? It's a premium price product. Um, this uh, bag is uh, suggested retail eleven ninety, and then, like I said before, the smaller ones a dollar ninety eight. At, at you know at the register. Okay. So for both the soft treats and the and your original formula, approximately twelve dollars for the pouch that we're yeah, seeing we, here. Yeah, we've line priced across the entire line. Yep. Okay. Can dogs just? I mean, I'm sure they can, but has anyone just given dogs crickets? Like, just here, have a handful of crickets as opposed to being part of a formulated well, product. Well, that, that's how I started. <laughs> yeah, that was test number one. Yeah. Have a I mean, the the first thing I did. So I, when I was starting this business, uh, I looked at all different protein sources, trying to decide what I wanted to do. I was actually approached to run a grass-fed beef business, and I was like, I love the idea of sustainability but a cow is just not going to cut it. It's not a sustainable animal. So I started looking at alternative protein sources, and um, you know what you find is that the smaller the animal, the more sustainable it becomes. And we got all the way down to a cricket, <laughs> which is extremely sustainable. Um, yeah. So. And, and how can we be sure that it's hypoallergenic? That's always a little tricky. It just, it's a very new protein source for dogs. And, and again, I'm not like being challenging in a negative way. Just, you know, our, you know, allergic response is something that you would have to, you would have to over time, the animal would be exposed yeah. to it. And we no. may have some dogs that would become allergic. To fair, fair enough. If they ate, you know, I think it's all possible. of it comes when a dog overeats a, a certain right. type of product. But, but in fairness to you, yeah. if the animal's never had it before, it's a great alternative for a dog that may have multiple, multiple allergies. And, and there's been, it, no one has seen any uh, sensitivities to it. And in addition, it looks um, that we're, we may have a claim in the future and we're working towards whether or not this is going to to pan out, but um, University of Wisconsin just did a study on humans, and uh, the cricket protein is prebiotic. So it feeds the good bacteria in the gut and suppresses the inflammatory. So uh, as part of the work that we've done, we're, we're doing some testing on the, the gut biome of the dogs as well. What is the form, if you will, of the cricket going into the mix? Oh, is it already a, rendered down? I, I go back to working in my first pet store, sure. scooping crickets, so I no, no. <laughs> basically see you scooping crickets and throwing them in the blender. Yeah, when it comes to us, I should have brought that over. I, if you want to come see, it's in our booth over there. Um, we do have a sample of it, but it is... Um, so the, the whole process, it, it's actually very humane. The, I said before, they, they live 80% of their natural life. At the end of their life, they lower the temperature and they go into hibernation. And that's when they're harvested. And uh, they're basically washed, roasted, and then ground. And what we get is a very fine uh, flour, but it is the, it's, it used the entire animal, so there's no waste. Um, and we're working with a flour. It's not like a normal flour because there's no gluten, right? So, um, so you have to think about how is it going to suspend and how is it going to... Uh, powdered crickets. Yeah, it's powdered crickets. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, that was a great presentation. We really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to present. My pleasure. Thanks. Well, we've got some great companies here, and we're really, we're really excited that you guys uh, contributed your story to us. It really means a lot, and uh, we are very excited for uh, also for our, our last sparker, and uh, it's our new friend Sugar McMillan, and his product is the original dog hook, and he's bringing up his beautiful Diana and Valerie, both beautiful. Diana's the dog. Watch the video. Test, test. We good? Well, whenever you're ready to start, we'll just we'll just give you a, we'll 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 bark you in. Go. All right, I'll start you over. You look like you're looking at that sand. We don't want you to lose any valuable time, sugar. Hey, Diana. Let me know. Hey, puppy. Hey, baby. All right, here we go. Three, two, go. My name is Sugar McMillan, and this is the original dog. You might know me uh, by Sit and Stay Pet Products. Since then, we've changed our name. 
As you know, the pet industry is allocated to make $70 billion. 22% of that goes towards gates and crates, which is the number one item that's donated to shelters and to the trash dump. Recently, a friend of mine saw the relationship that I have with my dog and said, can you train your dog like mine? Sure. Nevertheless, when I got home, I had to deal with my then girlfriend and she wanted no parts. The dog was wild and unsocial. I just wanted the behavior to stop and she didn't want the gates in the crates. So I did what every dog owner does. I separated him. <laughs> and he did what every dog does. Bark like crazy, pee, scratch at the door, just basic separation anxiety stuff. I wanted the behavior to stop, and she didn't want the gates and the crates in the house. That's when I came up with Easy Hug, an easy way to control your dog's boundaries while allowing him to be a part of the environment without dominating the environment. It's so simple. Dog on it, it's easy. Okay. Oh, and as a matter of fact, I like to do this. Um, you know something? I think I'll start from the back. two colors, black and cream? Absolutely not. Okay. What is it coming? Look. Take a look on the back. On the back. On, on which back? This back? Where's my, where's my, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Oh, Every color. Jeez. Um, okay. Where, you you, where do you manufacture this? Baltimore, Maryland. Seven. It's made in the USA. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And what's the suggested retail sugar? The retail price is $45.99, um, and that comes with uh, two two wall hooks and, I'm sorry, two wall mounts and one hook, so it's for two rooms. Thank you. You can also purchase the additional wall mounts um, for $14.99 well. What are you talking about? Additional wall mounts comes in their own box. Um, we Don't be shy. We're going around right now. If y'all want to see it, if y'all want to feel it, feel the weight. So the least. If anyone would like to right see the ones that's going around, uh, I think there's a silver one going around. So if you have a silver house or you just love this silver color, uh, it definitely works well. Where, where are you selling this now? Uh, we're currently um, doing uh, online and also uh, boots on the ground. Um, we've been actively selling since March of 2018, and we sold about 400 units. Um, so a little bit over $18,000, $19,000 right now, so a profit. and. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Profit? What's that? Are we... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man. Are, are you looking to get into the pet retail sector, or you want to go direct to consumer? Um, we're actually looking to get into uh, retail, where you know, in, uh, um, pet retailers will buy from us wholesale. Um, we have we're in two Ace Hardware store hardware stores currently. Um, in the in Washington D.C. area, nice. um, we were also looking at other avenues such as licensing. Um, imagine putting your logo here. Um, if you are a Hilton hotel or You're something of that, which is a, a dog-friendly hotel, You're a logo. Um, or Baltimore Ravens or something like that. Um, you know, so we're looking at those avenues as well and open to suggestions. So for dog-friendly cafes, you could sell those. Exactly. We're actually um, in 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 front of a few uh, individual hotels that have purchased from us um, in their lobbies for when you check in and they have it at the front desk and they just are like able to slip their, uh, their slip their dog hook on there. Uh, we're actually in front of uh, a, a few 7-Eleven uh, type establishments um, where dogs are held there as well. Are they securing them in, in the outdoor facility so people don't steal the hooks? Yeah. Um, he, ha he has done, because we're small and we're just starting, he helps with the um, original uh, installation. So the, uh, for the metal um, posting, so the ones on that are outside are going into brick, and so they're um, uh, secured. In so secured in that way. And then the ones that are inside and how you secure them in your home, 
is through the studs on your wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we, we happen to have one of our dogs is, is a real, I mean, she jumps upside down, does backflips to get out of her collar. So that's probably just because we are really, really bad dog trainers. We're really good at nutrition, really bad at training. <laughs> but I'm just a little concerned that a really aggressive jumping dog could, can they get, get out of there with that little loop because it's not a closed loop? Um, I'm, I'm glad that he just asked that question. One of the questions, I don't know if anybody heard it. Can he get out of the loop because there's nothing here? So the way that this is designed, there, there's a special design on this, right? And if you can kind of see it, you can probably bend it if you wanted to at the top. But right here, you're not bending this, right? Now, it's so deep that unless your dog has thumbs, <laughs> he's not taking this off. We're at four uh, police uh, canine units currently, and uh, they've supported it 100%. Um, if you are a trainer and um, or somebody who doesn't know how to train, you can actually train your dog from sitting down. Imagine how easy that is, right? Um, I have a little dog, I'm 6'3". I didn't know how to train a dog, and I've seen people. Sit! Sit! Do you know how scary that is to most <laughs> dogs? Uh, chasing a dog around a room, telling them to sit. Some dogs frightened. Some dogs uh, uh, retort back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a little late, but it was Yeah, it was a little late. I like it, though. Um, the ability of it is for you to move it from room to room so that he is a part of the environment. Through time, you'll be able to lower his anxiety, which that's what we all want. And you'll be able to train him and bring him from room to room. You can't do that with gates or crates. The only thing that concerns me is that somebody's going to put it up improperly. And I know that's not your problem, but it, you don't have a hook with it or it comes with hardware. I don't know why I was oh, there, okay. and the hardware is there. Can I answer? We have a question about, uh, so in terms of, oh, okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. wanted to say that in each box comes the screws that are for the actual, okay. um, for the beams in your home, and it's there's specific yes. instructions that tell you how to install Got it. So you just have to find a stud, yeah, something and it's, good solid. It's just two screws, okay. zip, zip, and it's on, and then you move it to the next room, and it's mobile. Okay. Still? My box didn't have it, so uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, we were opening them okay. and trying to no get y'all situated, okay. so I'm sorry. Go, Phil. Okay. We, we were just, um, we, we had a question about, um, you know, patents on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we're actually patent pending. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. That this is, okay. is actually his second patent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We were worried about that. We were Don't worried about, worried. you know, excited, call coffee us, cats, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. All right, yeah. My, my retailer experts here, how's that price point? Does that worry you a little bit? Uh, I mean, the, the cost? You mean the cost? Yeah, I mean, it's not outrageous, but it's a little on the high side. Approximately. I mean, Sorry, how much was retail? Well, the retail price is. So we're, so the retail price is forty five ninety nine. Um, you know, a crate is going to run you from fifty to a hundred dollars. You have to look at it um, like this is actually how it's packaged is going in two rooms. So you're holding your dog in two rooms. It's made of aluminum steel. Um, we would love to bring the price down, and hopefully, when we are able to continue to get our relationships um, a little bit stronger with other manufacturers and maybe even, you know, out of uh, United States, although we love making him here because he's a veteran, so we love that. Um, but going into other areas, um, we would definitely be able to bring it down if we could bring the actual manufacturing cost down. So we would open to that and then adjusting the prices. Yeah, your, your wholesale cost is 19 and change, right? Yes, correct. For that and then for the mounts uh, for is 9.99 if you want for the additional, additional, additional mounts. mounts. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's a very, very nice product, and uh, you definitely hats off to you, uh, Sugar, for developing this and taking it from scratch, from an idea to getting in a box ready to sell. We know, all of us here who have created products and those of us who, who market and sell products, it's a really long, tough road. So good job getting the product out on the market. Um, I think your, your packaging is nice. You're probably next generation. You could maybe spiff it up a little bit. Um, what would but, you suggest? I don't know. What do you guys think? Phil, you're... you're I like the package, personally. I like, it. I like the pa I think the package is fabulous. Thank you. 
I don't think it's comp like I, I think the best part about it is it's simple. simple. You put it on the shelf, it's really self explanatory. Um, you can merch, you know, you can you can add colors and, and kind of merge them in a nice block. Um, I think maybe the only worry I have is that you've got a lot of colors there. Um, so I'd, I'd worry about, you know, like how many... Just basic neutrals. Yeah, yeah. do you yeah. know what I mean? Like for, for you more than the retailer, because the retailer will pick what they want, but you're probably going to get jammed up on selling like a handful of reds and a handful mm -hmm. of blues, right? right? And everything else is going to be those neutrals. So, okay. Um, so right? you think like just, absolutely, yeah. just basic just color? Baseline, yeah. like three, three to four, or four. That's okay. It. Yeah. So can yeah. we... Can we get rid of that screw hole? <laughs> Can we get rid of that screw hole? Well, it, it made it set just a little bit different after installed. Again, I'm just speaking for my wife, who would tell me that she doesn't like looking at that screw. So I would use probably a drywall screw, put it in. But if it just sat a little bit different, then you could mask that completely. Well, that's something to consider so for the next mold and, you know, it would next have to be round of investments. It would be a whole yeah. new mold. Yeah, yeah. and that, mm -hmm. yeah. that's crazy. Thank you for that, though. That's, that's, that's really good. How, yeah. how much do the replacement plates sell for? The yeah. retail or wholesale? Uh, retail and wholesale, I guess. The These are, uh, let's see, uh, wholesale, they're nine ninety nine, and yeah. retail, I think, about three seventy five. Okay. Something like that, yeah. All right, well, guys, uh, excellent presentation, and we want to thank you so much. Uh, and, and we are going to have to uh, take a minute or two here with the panel to um, add up our scores. But we want to give a big round of applause to all of our presenters, all of our barkers today. Thank you for making Bark Your Biz uh, uh, happen this year, for being here with us. And we'll give us about five minutes, and we will calculate and announce our winner. Thank you. All right, we want to thank everyone who participated and, and our audience. We did lose some of you guys because we're packing up, but um, we'd like to announce our winner for the 2018 Best Barker Award to Jiminy Ann Carlson. Excellent job. It was a very close call, and we loved all your products, and we loved the heart and passion you put into everything. So we know through second, third, and fourth, we have our winner, and everyone else are our runner-ups, and uh, we congratulate you, everyone. Um, we'll make sure that you get by mail a digital copy of your certificate and also your voucher for next year towards the trade show. And um, we just really appreciate your being here and, and hope that you enjoy the experience. <laughs>